welcome and here we go like every uh, good teacher we should start with a learning goal uh, I haven't had an opportunity to try this yet with my grade 9 applies but uh, I know I would the next time I teach my learning goal every day I would create one of these little avatars to do the learning goal so it's a free service if you want to embed things in presentations you got to pay otherwise you just make these by the end of this session, you will be able to identify multiple digital tools that will help you collaborate and engage students as well as improve student learning. So you can, it's really simple, you can just pick from pre-made avatars, you just type in the learning goal and hit go. It's that simple uh, and I think they would love seeing that every day. You can have animals, you can have all kinds of crazy things. I picked Donald. Okay, so that, uh, that website is called uh, Bokey, uh, and that's all it is, really, it's just to build some avatars and have them say whatever you want. Okay, so most of you are familiar with giving feedback uh, to students through Google Docs. Uh, maybe this is uh, a little different, it combines a few things. Uh, and allows you to use rubrics uh, really, really efficiently uh, to uh, provide feedback to students. So if you need help with this, I'm not taking credit for this. I've just found it and I've tried it a few times and I love it. Uh, I've given you the link to a YouTube video where you can watch and it'll walk you through the whole process. I'm going to give you an overview, uh, but this little link here will take you and you can watch it at your will. All right, so the way it works is this. If you're using Google Classroom, you would have your students submit uh, their assignment to the Google Classroom. And then you need to find two Google add-ons okay, that you use along with Chrome, uh, and they're called uh, Doctopus and Gubrick. Okay, and really all you have to do is you make up a rubric in a Google Sheet, uh, and then you make up another Google Sheet or your assignment. You don't have to do anything with this other than give it a name. And once you've done those two things, it's pretty straightforward. And I really would like to show you how to do this. I think I'm just going to run through all the stuff I have. And if you want to come back, I can show you how to do this. I set up uh, a sample class so that you can see how it works. What happens is you end up getting something that looks like this. So the student's assignment is here. The rubric that you put is along the top and all you have to do is click, highlight boxes, you can leave comments, and one of the best features is you up here you just click the microphone and you can give voice feedback if you wish. And you just talk uh, or just fill in whatever you'd like to do. Uh, and at the end, when you hit this little submit button, the beautiful thing is it takes and attaches the rubric right to the student's work. It attaches the comments, it attaches the audio file. If you made one, everything's done in one click. It also records all of your <coughs> inputs. So all of the students, all of the levels for all of those, it collects everything, it's all there for you. You can go back at another time if you want to input it you know, into something like Markbook. Um, but I found it really, really, really useful to be able to just click on rubric boxes and then do it. Okay, so that's one. Uh, the problem with using Chromebooks for a lot of teachers, grade 9 or 10, is if you have student notes and you like to convert your student notes from Word into something like a Google document, all of the uh, formatting usually changes. And for a lot of people it's been a nightmare. Uh, an alternative is to just make your file into a PDF. Okay, but in order to do things with that PDF, you need what's called an annotator. And we've gone through at our school a lot of these, and some work and some don't, and they, we found one now that seems to work really, really, really well. And so the beautiful thing, right, with a PDF is it looks exactly like your original document. Okay, and with this one, uh, it's called Cami. Uh, you, can, you can do everything you could ever want to do with it. And I'll just show you really quick. I think this one should work pretty fast. Uh, so here's just a PDF. Uh, if 
I open it up with this annotator, you can do multiple things and really, really easily. So if you've got, you know, a worksheet with blanks and you want the kids just to fill up this, you just click it and type in, done. That's not always been easy. Oops, changed the wrong thing. You can highlight, you can strike through, you can do all kinds of things. Okay, so you can just strike, I mean, it's, it's really simple. And the other thing that people at my school love about this is you can draw. And so, you know, for things in science where you need to draw, you can just draw right on top. And that, for a lot of people, has been a problem because you've had to open up, like, something in Google, right, and do the drawing, and then this you can just draw right all over the top. Yep. Can this be added to a uh, Chromebook, or does it need to be on a web, like, an actual laptop? Uh, no, Chromebook, yep. Oh, no. uh, yep. This one works with the Chromebooks. Does it have voice? Uh, voice this talk? one, I'm not sure. Do you if it... right with it, or just... Yeah, so see, read and write is like an annotator. It's the same well, sort yeah, of thing. Well, yeah, it's very much like that. It's not like a corner that has, that has the ability to yeah, use voice. Yeah, I'm not sure this one does okay. of the voice. Uh, we've just found it much yeah, more, you know, the, yeah, read and write sometimes works well, yes. sometimes yeah. not so much. All right, this is one, uh, if you've never seen draft back, so you have the ability to go and look at students' revisions, right, and work in Google Docs, so you can go back and look through their revision history. Draft back takes all of their revisions and makes them into a movie. And then you can watch everything happen in 30 seconds or a minute. And some teachers really love to see all of the things that are happening when those big chunks of information come in at once. So I just took somebody's work here. We'll see if this goes quick. If not, come back. Okay, so they had all the questions in there, and then it just makes it into a movie. So you can just watch all of their work, you can speed it up, you can slow it down, and simply just, again, another simple add-on that, yes, works in the Chromebooks, and it's just an add-on. All right, so anyway, that gives you some idea of what that looks like. Okay, next one is draw. I.O., if you've never seen, in terms of graphic organizers, this is, again, probably the most useful one we've come across. Really simple to use. You just drag shapes over, fill them in, color them. You draw lines between them. It makes the lines really, really simple to use. show you this one again just so you can see kind of what it's like so it's just really drag and drop connect things you just click on boxes type in them real real simple Okay, and so if you're after using graphic organizers, there you go. And this was one somebody from my school just used grade 10 chemistry for looks like nomenclature, naming chemical compounds. All right, so after they'd done it all, I think had the kids lay out flow charts so that they could easily do that. All right, so this was my uh, grand finale for today, but whoa, it took me a lot of time to figure this out. So. <laughs> You can see there it might need a video for this one. So my plan is at some point is to make a, you know, kind of video for you to follow along if you'd like to do this, but it's a pretty neat, neat idea. Uh, it came from uh, a e-learning teacher uh, that I just found online and I was really excited. I was like, oh great, I'll watch how to do this. And it turned out I had to pay for it and I didn't want to pay. So I was left on my own to try to figure out how to do this. And it's taken some time, but it, it is really cool. So the idea is you have your students submit some work uh, to do peer review on. So they use a Google form, they submit their work, 
and automatically uh, the, the Google Sheet generates uh, an email to the student with somebody else's work for them to peer review. So as soon as they submit their work, they get some work to peer review. They go through it, they fill out another form with their comments, suggestions, and all the rest. They submit that, and that then gets returned automatically to the original student whose work it is. And so, I mean, yes, you could do this, I guess, by collecting stuff and read, but you know, just a digital way to do it. Uh, and again, if you didn't have an actual physical class sitting in front of you, it might be a useful tool. Um, I haven't tried this yet with my guys. I've spent a lot of time learning how to make it work, but I'm going to try it with some lab reports and stuff in science and see if I can get it to function. So anyway, this one works. Um, you need a few pieces to get this to work, and I'm hopefully going to have a chance just to show you how it functions. So you have a form. They submit their work. Okay. It goes into a Google Sheet, right? Collects all of this stuff, okay? And then using a couple of add-ons, one of them's called Copy Down, and one of them's called Form Mule. The Copy Down simply copies formulas that you need to generate. Um, well, what I did was I just generate each time a kid submitted something, I generated a code from a formula. Then I used another. Uh, formula to, you can see it's really just taking one student's work and moving it down a line to send it to this student. So it's really just every student who submits is getting the one that submitted before them. Formula then sends an email out with that information, okay, and then you use all of this again to do the second part. Okay, so the two things that you need to do this are copy down, which just copies formulas automatically when somebody submits something so you don't have to worry about running out of space and form mule is what sends the email and they send the emails from you essentially so you could do this anonymously if you really wanted to right if you didn't want the kids to know whose work they're looking at that can be done as long as the kid doesn't put his name on the work then are those both add-ons yeah they're both add-ons Chrome add-ons, yeah, to the Chrome browser. And that stuff's all coming from a group. Um, yeah. New Visions for Public Schools, they're the ones that have made these add-ons. Uh, and I think they're also involved with that doctor post and stuff as well. Okay, so if you wanted to try this, uh, if you got a return email from that first Google form that I just had you fill out, you'd have that address there and you could just click on it. You could try it if you wanted, but if you go to that form and put in some information, you can make everything up. Your email address needs to be correct. You'd get a return right now, so you could try it to see what happens if you wanted to give it a shot. Did you say it was a copy down? app that did the randomization of like who gets what? No, so you have to make up a formula to do that. Okay, you make up that formula. Yeah, and then so. it just copies it wherever you want it to. Yeah. Every time someone submits, it just copies that formula, <laughs> right? So you know you can copy formulas pretty easily, but... So copy down was an app or was that an app? Yeah, it's, it's, a, an, app. it's an add on for Google Chrome. That did which part Sorry. of that process? So it... Is it an add on for Chrome or is it an add on for Sheets? Uh, yeah, an add-on for sheets, I guess, yeah, you're probably right. So What role did it play, I guess? Yeah, so here, um, every time that, so I put it in one time, I put in a, something to generate a code. Mm -hmm. Each time someone submits, it copies down the formula so that it generates this, 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 this. Right then on. I had another formula to generate this, it just copies all of them. So if you have ten formulas that you want to use, it copies them all and moves them every time someone submits. Okay. Yeah. So it's just <coughs> just a little convenience thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, you know, try it if you wish. If not, no need to. You can try it at another time. 